we're back with five guys and the Bible. And we thank you for watching. Thank you for joining in with us. And hey, while we're at the beginning of the video, I always like to say, why not just take the time and like us now, uh, share us, pass it along. Because you know you'll forget to later. So there's no time like the present. All right, tonight we have a question uh, that's been tossed around with us for a while. Uh, bounced back and forth. We haven't done it ever. Uh, not really. Can, we haven't talked about it too much. Uh, but the question is about yoga. And should Christians participate in yoga? Should they avoid it like the devil? So uh, let's uh, start with Jason. Jason Schultz. Go ahead, Troy. He's got Jason, something. How would anyone have a problem with Yoda? I mean, he was I, such a key character in Star Wars. I, I so totally misunderstood the question. Oh. I thought it was, can Stop. Christians do Yoda? Can Christians try Yoda? And I'm like, try, try not. Do or do not. There's no try. Right? But <laughs> yoga? Oh. Oh, it's totally different. You guys. We didn't have this plan. I was going to say, did you guys get together for this? Oh, oh my. So scary. All right. All right. Jason seriously. Schultz is number one. Here we go, Jason. Can Christians do yoga? Um, I'm going to say no. And then try to explain it. Stick with me for a minute. I had to do a lot of research about yoga. I am not the kind of guy who gets up in the morning and does a sunrise stance and poses like a warrior or any of uh, those things, right? I'm, I, I'm not that familiar with the concept because I've never done it. But in what I've looked up, Okay, and the history of yoga and where it started and what it's meant to do. The word yoga itself translates into the word union. The idea of it is that you are becoming one with the Hindu concept of God. Um, in, in that, I would avoid it, you know. Um, now, I, I've got people who are very close personal friends of mine who are Christians who do yoga, and I'm not out to condemn them. I'm not out to change it. But if somebody asks me, you know, is that a good idea, and, you know, would defend it by saying, well, what about the health benefits? You've got the, uh, the stretching. It can be used to, as a strength exercise. Um, I think there's probably other ways of doing that, but based on what I've researched, if you're just doing the stretching and you're just doing the poses and you're just doing it for exercise, that's not yoga, right? I don't have a problem with stretching and posing and exercise. The problem is what that stuff is meant to do where it's it starts with a um, – an idea of spiritual growth and enlightenment through these things. And there's no amount of exercise that's going to bring you spiritual growth and enlightenment. As a matter of fact, Jesus said bodily exercise profits little. doesn't mean it doesn't profit at all, and I like to run. Well, that's not true. I like having run. I don't like the process. I like the feeling when I'm done. But <clears throat> you can you can do those things, and they're good for you, but it's not – spiritually enlightening, which is what yoga is intended to do, in my understanding, is to be spiritually enlightening. So I would avoid it in that sense. If it's just the physical part of it, that's not really yoga. So my answer is going to be no, a Christian shouldn't do yoga. And uh, with that, I'll let the next guy talk. All right. I'm the next guy. Um, I've been – going to yoga for the better part of a year. Um, I don't know that I have... I, there was one person one time that I, I think was more of the uh, spiritualistic, uh, you might say, person. 
I didn't, I didn't go back to her. Most of the time it's just mainly bending and stretching and, and going for the health benefit of that. Um, I started because my blood pressure was through the roof. I was making a lot of lifestyle changes. My blood pressure dropped immediately. Flexibility increased. A lot of health benefits to it. I would like to say this, though. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 4, and I understand this is talking about idols and eating foods to idols, but listen here. It says, As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. There is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods, many and lords, many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all, whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol, unto this hour, eat it is a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. For me... Commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we better, neither if we eat not are we worse. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Now, I read this because, you know, the question is, is you know, you're going to walk into a, a studio and there might be a Buddha statue somewhere. There might be a Hindu statue somewhere. Well, there is at your Chinese restaurant, too. Did it stop you from going there? No, it did not. Um, you went there, and you enjoyed that. You enjoyed your Japanese steakhouse uh, all the while, while the same symbols were there. Why? Because it didn't matter to you. You weren't there, and you didn't care the fact that, you know, when they started the establishment, they blessed it to their gods. Um and you'll notice those little, if you walk in and look above the door, you'll notice the little mirror structures that they have. It's all about their gods. But it didn't matter to you because you were there for the food, right? Well, you go to a yoga studio and they tell you to bend over and stretch and think about why you're there and think about getting rid of some negative thoughts or whatever. It has nothing to do with worshiping any other god or anything like that. And I understand there are some places that, you know, will heavily try to influence you towards that. You know, there's always places for a Christian to go and do it and reap the health benefits and move on. So I'm just going to go with that, and I'm going to turn it over to Troy McGahan. Well, thank you, John. And first of all, I know this is going to shock some of you all but I don't do yoga. I know, I know. I'm incredibly flexible. I'm very athletic, and I'm everything you would you would imagine when you think of someone that does yoga, but to your surprise and everyone else's, no, I don't. However, I have seriously considered doing this thing called DDP yoga. Uh, DDP is a fellow by the name of Diamond Dallas Page, for all you 90 wrestling fans out there. He is... <laughs> Do not mock me. Guys, honestly, there's been... I am seriously, seriously, research it. Okay, you'll see that it's been a real health benefit to some guys. It helps lose weight. It does help with things. Now, my struggle with all this, with yoga, is what does it, spiritually speaking, where does it fall? So when this was addressed or asked several months ago, I went to a person that I know uh, that has not really been involved, come to find out wasn't really involved in yoga, but was doing some of the stretching and stuff, and her name is Karen Hall. She's a very fine young lady, uh, loves the Lord, uh, her and her husband, Scott Hall, and ask that you pray for them. He's waiting on a, a transplant list for some life-saving transplants with different organs and so on. And his heart, I believe, is one of them. But she replied to me when I asked this question. I asked her if I could quote her. She said, certainly. 
She said, I considered this same question, talk about whether it was good for a Christian to do. She said, when I first started yoga, she said, I knew nothing about yoga. Honestly, I kind of thought it was a joke. I thought it was all about om and meditation and crazy people did it. The truth is, it can be about that. But I learned as I looked into it is there are literally about 30 different types slash styles of yoga. Different types focus on different things. Certain types are a spiritual practice. They meditate and have actual chants that they say, and it has nothing to do with a physical practice. She said, honestly, I call what I do yoga basically for a lack of a better term. She said, I focus on balance, flexibility, and strength. And one article that I read that if you aren't into this, I read in one article, excuse me, that if you aren't into the spiritual part of yoga and you not practice it in the correct sequence, you do not do yoga, you do strength exercises, which some would consider more like a gymnastics minus the flips and tumbling. She said, I do not place my hands in prayer and say namaste which is what you will hear most yoga instructors say at the end of a class, which means I bow to you. She said, I took classes at the yoga studio downtown for a month and stopped because I don't agree with all that. She said, exercise at home where no chance bowing or saying words that I don't know what they mean doesn't take place. I exercise. She said, if a Christian takes part in the India yoga practice, I do believe it's wrong. So, again, being as I am not the expert, being as I have, again, hard to believe, I've never done this, I will defer to someone else. But let me say this, too. Is there anything wrong with exercise? No. And I think that's something it would do all of us good to remember, including myself. All joking aside, uh, when I exercise, My blood pressure is better. My stress level is better. Uh, I lose weight. As skinny as I am, I know it's hard for me to even think about losing any more, right? You know, I'm being funny here. But all joking aside, I think sometimes we as Christians look for reasons not to do something than for reasons to do something. So is yoga in the sense of like in a spiritual practice, like, what they do in India and so forth, is that wrong? Sure. But as far as exercise, no, nah, there's nothing wrong with it. So this is one of those things where I'll have to defer to someone like Karen Hall, who did a good job with explaining, and also my dear friend, Dr. John Fry. Are chiropractors really doctors? I'm just kidding. Uh, Dr. Fry here. Uh, I'll refer to defer to them and uh, give liberty in that. So, anyway, is it wrong to practice bending, stretching, and strength training? No. Would it be wrong to bow to someone else? Yeah, that's probably an issue. So, I'll pass it on. All right. That's going to move us to Todd Bryant. Well, I assume on a video on yoga, which I thought this was about forest fires. I now know it's not. Um, Only you can prevent forest fires. You know, Yogi. Anyway, uh, (laughs) that's smoke. The um, I got it, Todd. Yeah, well, there Yogi's in the. He's in the woods too, though. He's at Yellowstone. Yogi, same thing. Nobody's watching but mine and Mark's mom by this point. Jellystone. Anyway. So, <laughs> Jellystone, Jellystone. I mean, it doesn't really matter what I say because I think probably everybody's heard enough about yoga already. I, I, I am always bothered by the we can trace it back to paganism, so we need to not do it. I, I just, I, I cannot stand that line of thinking. I, I know we've talked about things like that before, and I'm always the guy saying, You can trace neckties back to paganism, but y'all all all still wear them to church. And it's true. I mean, there's some validity to that. John does not bow down to idols when he's stretching in a yoga class. You know, 
uh, you can you can trace quite a number of sports back to paganism. The games were around all of the pagan gods of Rome. Well, we all still watch the Olympics. We still encourage our kids to run track and field. You know, I mean, all of that was traced back to paganism. Karate was based around Eastern religions, you know. I mean, but, you know, we let our kids take karate. To me, it's just stretching. Now, if you're going in there and you are making a religion out of it, you're taking part in pagan rituals, without a doubt, that is wrong. There's nobody on this entire panel that is going to agree with that, I assure you. But if it just says yoga on the door, and when you walk in, you just stretch and turn around and walk back out, that's not idolatry. You you don't accidentally take part in idolatry. And I, I, I just... I, I hate that some folks really have the stress that, oh, no, this may be connected to paganism, so I can't do it. Don't go to the doctor because medical practice can be traced straight back to the witch doctor. I mean, you still got a serpent entwined around a, a, a piece of wood in his office on his diploma. That's straight back to the, the pagan gods of Rome. I, I, it is. We just really need to be careful with that whole line of thinking. If you're taking part in a pagan ritual, it's wrong. If you're just stretching, stretch away. That's about all I got. All right. That's going to bring us to Mark Campbell, right in the middle, to take us home. For the Todd oh. said it only his, <laughs> if Todd said that only his mom and my mom are watching, now that he's shut up, there's only one person watching, that'd be my mommy. But anyway, so uh, <clears throat> I'm um, yeah. Is yoga? Can a Christian do yoga? Well, I, they've sufficiently answered that, and I agree with all of them. Let, let me tell you another little. I do yoga too. The only thing is, I didn't know I was doing yoga. Um, I started this exercise program called Insanity, and um, doing all these stretches and all these exercises and all that, and. Man, it really helped me. I had the doctor telling me I was going to need knee surgery. I started doing this exercise program with the local football team. Took away my pain in my knee. I found out that I didn't need surgery because it corrected some of the weak muscles and weak tendons and ligaments that I had in my leg. And so I was doing yoga. I didn't even know it. But then come to find out that... The instructor of insanity's choice of lifestyle is not appropriate either. Guess what? I still do insanity, um, even though his lifestyle choice is not the best. Why? Because who he is and what he's doing, especially on the video, is not affecting me at all. Well, I think what Todd said is right. You have to you have to make a choice to worship. I was reading about Solomon today and how. Um, his heart was not perfect after God like uh, David, his father, was because, you know, he hadn't married all these wives and set up these temples and all of that. But we got to remember, he, what he did was he didn't accidentally worship Milcom and uh, Chemosh and all of those. He actually set up temples to those. It was a choice of his to practice that worship. He knew exactly what he was doing when he did that. David, his father chose not to worship those idols. He kept the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. David never had another god before him. That was the difference between him and his son. Solomon chose to worship those idols. And so I think if you're choosing to participate in the spiritual side of uh, yoga, then you are, as a Christian, you are probably committing idolatry and should not do it. But if you're not choosing to worship, you're just doing it for the exercise benefit, there's, there's, in my mind, no idolatry because it's not a choice. So with that, uh, I know I'm supposed to give the invitation because that's what I always do. Um, but I'll turn that over to John and leave that to someone else tonight. Hey, well, there's no other name under heaven which man can be saved except for Jesus Christ. And uh, we hope you know him.
I hope you're not putting your trust in any other God because there's no other God that can save you. So um, anyway, I hope we've sufficiently answered the question. And uh, again, like us, share us. Yeah, we beat this dead horse. We So uh, good night. God bless. Whatever it is to you, good morning. But thank you for watching.